I am going to try and show you how to paint an atmospheric and emotive seascape. Um, so first of all, just a quick run through what materials I'm going to use. Um, on the easel, I've got a, a tabletop easel here on my sort of studio worktop, and uh, this canvas is 50 by 50, but you can use any size you like. Um, I like this size because it's not too big and not too small either. You can make nice expressive marks. Um, I also use a glass palette where I've got my paints arranged kind of in an L shape. Uh, and I tend to start with the yellows into the oranges, reds, purples, into the blues, cooler blue, into green, into brown. That's just the way that I like to arrange things. I have a wide selection of brushes, as you can see. Uh, but for this exercise, I've just picked a sort of selection, a range. Uh, so arranging from this butte, which is a um, two and a half inch uh, Skyflow brush, which is really nice and soft, bit of, bit of spring in it for painting large areas, getting nice sweeping marks. Um, something kind of in between, fan brush, filbert, kind of small square brush, and a rigger, just for small lines and fine finishing details. I also use a selection of palette knives. Anyway, whatever selection you kind of feel happy with, as long as you've got a range of sizes, it doesn't really matter exactly which size and which shape, just a sort of broad selection so you can vary the marks and vary the size and shape of the marks that you're making. Okay, we'll get going. Uh, so first up, I should mention that we're painting this in oils. I use all sorts of various different makes, just depending on the colours that uh, I come across that I like. Um, I've got quite a, a range of different makes, as I say, from um, De La Roni, Winsor & Newton, um, Gamblin. Uh, so I tend to vary a bit and experiment. And uh, I would just say, don't be afraid to experiment, because the more you do, the more you learn. And I never stop learning, so it's all good. Um, just try and enjoy the journey. And don't get too hung up on the outcome. Just try and uh, enjoy the learning process. Right, um, I also usually start by um, squeezing a bit of white onto a piece of cardboard um, and that basically soaks up the oil. You can probably see that's already soaked up quite a lot of the excess oil and that means that it makes the paint nice and buttery. Um, so I try and do that first so that it's got a little bit of time to, uh, to work. And then leave all the other colours on the glass palette so that they don't dry out. Uh, mediums, I also use a range of mediums. Um, uh, this is one that I use most. Um, it's uh, Gerstacker, uh, but it's basically a quick drying um, paint additive. It kind of makes the, uh, the thins the paint, makes it glossy and helps it dry quickly. It's very similar to um, something like uh, this. I've also used this, De La Roni painting medium. Same sort of thing, it's a nice non-yellowing paint medium. Uh, I use a low odour thinner to um, thin the paint and also to clean my brushes. And I have a big paint bucket for that, which has got little holes, I don't know if you can see there. It has a grid in the bottom, which lets all the sed and paint sediments settle to the bottom keeps the um, the actual solvent fairly clean and it's also got a bar that you can pull the brush backwards and forwards to clean the brush. Also lots of paper towel and rags to, to wipe the brushes on. Okay so I'm going to start by mixing up some base colour just to get some colour on the canvas because there's nothing more scary than a big white canvas and I think I'm going to go for a fairly warm tone to start off with, just as an underpainting. Most of it will be covered up, but it just uh, it makes a nice base. I'm going to take my big Skyflow brush, put it in some solvent so it's a little bit uh, nice and moist to just work it into that kind of mix. And mix plenty of paint because you never have enough. Okay. 
And I'm literally just going to do a crisscross sweeping motion. It's quite wet because I want it to dry quickly when it's quite thin at this stage. Literally just getting some colour on. Okay. <coughs> Super quick. Okay, so we're going to start uh, just kind of lightly sketching in, or blocking in, I should say, uh, a basic composition. Uh, you can work from a photograph if you have one. I tend not to. I tend to work from a combination of photos, sketches and memory, because um, I live by the sea, so it's really fresh in my mind all the time. Um, but whatever source material you've got, really. But try not to put it somewhere where you can copy it because then you'll lose the freshness and movement. So if you imagine that a canvas is divided into thirds, two, and then thirds horizontally as well, the point at where those imaginary lines intersect is roughly where you want to keep your focal points. Not bang in the centre because that's too obvious and not way off the side because then people's eye kind of wanders off the edge. You want to keep the interest kind of in the centre but but not dead centre otherwise it's too kind of uh, symmetrical. So we're going to kind of go with about this third here so if that's the top make that the top of our wave and then I'm going to sweep it down diagonally kind of towards this bottom third and then this one's going to sweep off this way is really loose and rough at the moment you can only just see that it's just enough to get an idea of whether of where you're going to put things now when you're a kid you draw waves kind of in a in that sort of pattern don't you <laughs> like that uh, we don't really want to do that um, but we are basically making the same shape we're making this kind of swooping shape if you try and imagine yourself being on a boat and rocking backwards and forwards, it's kind of the motion that you want to make with your brush. Just kind of swing and, and use your whole arm to do it. If you do this, you end up doing little tiny marks and it will look stilted and false. You want the energy in the wave. Just make a nice sweeping motion and rock it backwards and forwards. And you're kind of going for these shapes like this. That's the kind of basic motion of creating the waves. So it's really very loose and fairly intuitive, my process, but um, it just gives you somewhere to start, somewhere, somewhere to work to. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up a kind of grey colour and uh, block in the sky area and then we'll kind of work down into the waves, see how we go. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've just uh, picked up a big palette knife and uh, some of the paint that we used in the sky, the dark grey, and I'm just kind of working out the shapes of the waves. So if you imagine, if you kind of use the side of the knife just with a roll of paint on it and just rock it. Just imagine you're on that wave, you're kind of in a boat, rocking backwards and forwards. Okay, so this kind of rocker shape is going to form your wave pattern. And obviously we've got a high point here because we want that to be our focal point. We've got a big wave kind of coming down. We're not too steep. 
the way that wa waves kind of go is that they tend to be shallower on one side and steeper and more curly on the other. So if we say that this is our side facing our light source, and this one, this one here is going to be a bit shallower. So these are going this way, these are going this way. And then somewhere in the middle, they kind of come over the top. So you're making this sort of motion. And then what's going to happen is that in front of this wave, there'll be another one that kind of is not directly in line because waves don't come in straight line. So we'll put that one here on this third intersection to make it interesting. So we'll say that there. And then this will be the sharp bit and this will be the long sweep. You could do this with a brush as well. I just find it quite useful to have something that's kind of straight, a straight edge that I can kind of rock. Brush tends to put too much paint on it all at once. If you just use the edge of a palette knife, just a thin roll of paint on it, and then you can apply that straight onto the canvas. Um, and the thing I really want to emphasize is that you're trying to make an expressive painting. You're trying to make something with movement and energy. So don't be there doing little tiny marks. You want to use your whole arm, your whole body and rock like you're on a boat and you're tossing and turning on these big waves. I kind of put a bit of energy into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to try and build up a bit of colour and give them a bit more 3D shape, uh, a bit of light and shade, and uh, see where we go. Now if we imagine that our light source is coming from over here somewhere, so it's going to... Where the, where the wave is rising up and the light source is coming from behind it, you'll have a bit of translucency, but you'll also, where it the, hits the surface of the water, you'll have a bit of reflection, so that's going to be lighter. On the back side of the wave, it's going to be darker because it's away from the light. So I'm just going to block in a bit of colour on this side. And also at the bottom of the wave, where it's less translucent because you haven't got the light behind it, it'll be darker at the bottom as well. Water is not one colour, it's constantly moving and shifting and catching the light in different ways. Just like if you're painting a landscape, uh, you have a kind of the effect of perspective. So the further away things are going, the smaller they appear, apart from this monster wave. Um, <laughs> but the, the kind of little mini waves that make up this big one will get smaller. And then closer towards you, they're going to get bigger, which means your marks need to get bigger, closer to you. And these will be much finer in the distance. Also, the colours here will be lit mostly, apart from where we put the highlights, will be mostly more muted, more grey, less contrast. And then down here, they're going to be much uh, darker, more um, more vibrant colour than closer to you. Because the effect of perspective is that things tend to grey out the further away they are. Just keep remembering that you're using this rocking motion to build up all the little ripples, the little mini wavelets that make up the bigger wave shape. And this is basically the process that we're going to use right the way through, is this crisscrossing rocking shape. Again, I'm still using the paint fairly thin here, because it's just the early stages. We don't want too much paint on there to go muddy before we've even started. And then where, the, where this wave is curling over, they're going to kind of change direction. So that curve will kind of... Not too much, but... And then as it comes down, it's going to flatten out and then kind of go the other way. So you kind of get a, a peak. And then in the trough, it's kind of flatter, shallower mark. Okay, you can see it's starting to look a little bit like waves. 
The other thing you'll notice is that I'm not sitting down to do this. It's really important if you're trying to make create something that's fluid and energetic that you're fluid and energetic. Otherwise you end up making little tiny marks using your wrist and being very careful. And then the result is that the painting looks stilted and dead. If you want to get energy into your painting, you've got to move. You need to stand up and move your whole arm. Oops. <laughs> um, rather than doing little tiny marks like this. Give it a bit of welly. Don't be afraid to make a big sweeping mark. It's only paint. And the beauty of oil paint is you can take a clean brush, you can just blend it into the sky, take a rag with a clean corner, and just lift it off again. Where you get this blending of the horizon as well, it helps to kind of create atmosphere. Because if you've ever been out at sea in a storm, and trust me, I have, you usually can't see the horizon. It's a hazy mist of salt and spray and clouds and rain and whatever else is out there. I often use my fingers too. God-given tools, very useful things. All kind of adds to the sensory enjoyment of the process which is why I also keep old towels in the studio to wipe my hands on and on that note also just a thing a little thing of baby oil just a drop of baby oil if you want to get oil paint off anything use more oil and then a paper towel just to get the oil off <laughs> the best way to clean your hands Right, so now we're going to add some colour. Just make that really lovely greeny turquoisey sea green. <laughs> you can see I've just blocked in very loosely a bit of translucent colour and Actually, I have used a little bit of painting medium in a foil dish um, rather than the solvent now because I want it to dry a bit quicker and I want it to uh, be a bit more transparent. I'm trying to build up a bit of uh, body to the paint. But we're kind of now getting to the point where it's time to stop and let it dry for a bit. Um, I think there's a tendency for people to think they have to complete, sit down and complete. They've got an afternoon off, they're gonna paint a paint painting. Uh, I never paint a painting in one session. It's always at least three. And so I have um, maybe 10 paintings on the go all at once, all hanging up around the studio at different stages drying. And that means that I can um, I've always got something I can work on. I don't get too hung up, too precious about one particular painting. And uh, I've got time to think about it and evaluate before I move on to the next stage. So if you've kind of got to the point where you think you just need to let it dry and leave it alone, or you just need to think about it, go make a cup of tea, and then maybe start something else, or just do a sketch, do something else for a while, and uh, you'll find the painting is better for it. Hello, uh, we're back in the studio, uh, this is all nice and dry now, so uh, we're going to attack it with some fresh energy and gusto, see what happens. So now I'm going to put in some big sweeps of colour and some lighter areas and I'm going to apply thicker paint, so far it's just been very thin translucent layers just really marking out the shapes more than anything. Now I want to get a bit of energy and gusto into it. Okay, 
So here's another trick I use. Now I'm going to take a little bit of solvent Bit of bravery Flick You might not want to do this in your kitchen But if you've got space where you can make a mess Go for it Okay now this requires a little bit of patience because you want the colours to run and the paint to blend in a fluid fashion. So although this is a bit kind of hit and miss and you have to take a slightly educated guess at where things are gonna how things are gonna mix, it's always fun. <laughs> and if it doesn't quite go according to plan, paper's how. And also you can tilt the canvas so that it runs in the direction you're trying to describe. I'm just going to put a bit more on here. Just gonna... I'm just flicking the solvent. using um, a bit of white on the medium palette knife and I'm just kind of working on this crest of the wave here and and then drag it downwards in a quick sweeping motion just keep repeating that motion so if this is the light source here these are the face of the waves as we as we described when we were kind of mapping it out As you can see, I'm just kind of playing with the shapes a little bit. Changed the composition slightly because so I felt like it was too much going on. Just simplified it just to these two wave shapes that are kind of echoing each other. And so I think that's a bit stronger. And you've got these nice diagonals kind of going and swooping. It's just a bit more pleasing to me. It's okay to change it as you go along. Why not? To your painting. Remember when I said it's kind of rock and backwards and forwards, so this water is kind of cascading down and what you get here is a sort of valley shape in between the waves. So I'm going to put back in that rocking again with the palette knife. I'm using a smaller one this time, it's just a bit more manoeuvrable. like ribbons of foam that kind of and if you just jiggle it as you're rocking let the paint kind of come off slightly randomly again using my whole arm Just go for it because if you make a mistake, so what? You can correct it, you can change it, you can put it down to experience and start again if necessary. But if you don't attack it with confidence, it won't look energetic and it won't have that movement and energy that we're looking for. Using a bit of dark colour now to put in the same rocking shape but to 
just lift a bit of the contrast. Can you see that straight away? If all the tones are too similar, it just looks like a kind of milky mess. So we're just going to punch it up a bit. You see, this is all still really dry, the sky area. This is all really wet now. <laughs> Just want to take a little bit of the sea colour and bring it up into the clouds here, just to kind of unify the picture so that you don't have a painting of two halves, that it feels cohesive. And the more kind of layers that you add, the more complex and interesting the painting becomes. Which is why you should never be frightened of, if you make a mistake, just let it dry and paint over it because the layer underneath will add texture and complexity and interest. So it's always a win. Sometimes the best paintings come out of the most mistakes. Pushing this up, it's kind of like a vapour coming off the surface. The other thing is that to think about the sea conditions, if you've got steep waves like this, it's usually because you've got the swell or the tide going against the wind and the wind pushes them up into peaks. So if you're thinking about that and the way that the sea works and the conditions work, if you've got wind, uh, you've got the swell kind of rolling in and the wind blowing this way, it's going to push the swell up into a, more of a peak. But then as it comes off the top, the vapour is actually going to go with the wind. So you get this plume effect. Um, so a nice way to do that is if we're taking a bit of that sea colour up into the sky. Again, arm's length, big brush, just to just a nice um, thin mix with a bit of medium make it transparent and we're just gonna sweep it. I'm gonna use a bigger brush. I'm gonna use the Skyflow brush so you get a nice even mark. So you've basically got to think like sea and think like wind. <laughs> Wind's gonna whistle, sweep past, blow that wave upwards. this palette knife it is, it's got a nice flat edge here which you can use a bit like like a calligraphy pen so that you can make a really thin sliced line on the, its side but if you drag it down it makes a really broad mark it creates like a ribbon effect need to, to jiggle it backwards and forwards. 